Corruption has remained the bane and canker which has fraught the various administrations since the Fourth Republic. Now, no matter the approach used by the various governments, it still remains something which no one can actually get rid of because it keeps bedeviling every administration. I'm here with the former director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative and the person of Vitus Azim. And he's going to tell us what we are in right now, the situation we're experiencing right now, and the way forward on how to curtail it and essentially obtain good governance. Mr. Vice Zazim, thank you so much for speaking with us. You're welcome. Great. So, tell me, what's the situation right now? Are we safe? Yeah, if you don't mind, let me start by saying that corruption is not a bane of just government since the Fourth Republic. Okay. Corruption has been with us since independence. You can remember what Nkrumah did, Don Brokers and other things that some people had to be sacked because of corruption. Mm. Under the Bouja regime, in fact, some of the soldiers came. One of the reasons was, has always been corruption, corruption, corruption. Under the Bouja, there were these posters in offices, do not give a bribe, do not, do not accept gifts, they are bribes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know the revolutionary days when people were shot. True. So it has been with us. But it seems to be worsening with the times. It is. It has been more serious with the Fourth Republic. And with every new government, new, every, new, every change of a new government, it seems to worsen. And you can see it with this present government. It was not as bad as it was under Kofu. It was not as bad as it was under Atamels and Rawlings. But it is getting really, really bad now. You didn't mention Mahama. Yeah, of course, because Mama and Artemis were in one government, so I would say that it was as bad as it is today. And so this 2019, the things that I come out are very unfortunate and should not be happening. So you're saying corruption is worse under this administration than the previous administrations? Every new, it's worse under every new administration. It's like it's a competition. So under Rawlings, I mean, it was better under Kufo than under Rawlings. And then it was better under Atamez Mahama than under Kufuor. Okay. And now it is worse under uh, this government than it was under the previous one. Let me, let me get this right. So it was going... It's always, like going, it's always going up. It's like you've been in opposition for, for eight years. You've come, you mm. want to make sure that you, you, you gather as much as possible. Wow. What do you think is the reason this is? Uh, there are many reasons. One, the human being is naturally greedy, wants to live a life that is admired by the rest of the people. So you want to make a lot of money, go outside and build, uh, acquire mansions, acquire businesses for your children, send your children uh, abroad to school and for holidays. Society sees you as a special person. That's one. That's the greed aspect of it. Mm. But. There's also the greed to hang on to power, to win and hang on to power. So, and, and our democracy says that you cannot win power if you don't have money. Okay. So you spend some time trying to raise some money. Sometimes you may not even have the money yourself. So you get it from people and against promises. When I come, I'm going to make you deputy minister of this. I'm going to make you minister of this. I'm going to make you minister of this. Oh, or you are a contractor, I'm going to make sure that you get the juiciest contracts in this country. So you come in with those promises. And if you win, you have to honor those promises. Okay. Now, those promises include giving positions and jobs to people who are not capable, who are not qualified to do those jobs. Like you give something to a contractor to construct a road. He's not a, contra a road constructor, contractor. Then he also passes it on to somebody else and takes a fee. Okay. Because you owe him that allegiance. You, you cannot actually do any, do any serious thing to the person. Well, so th this, this has been the passing throughout. Yeah. But, but the 2018 um, CPI um, scores, however, say that um, this administration has performed better than, I mean, this year has, has been better than last year's. But what you're saying is contrary to this. You see, the, the Corruption Perception Index mm. uses two years information. Okay. It's not just like, if you say 2019, it's not just information about 2019 alone. 
they would have taken information from 2018 as well. And it also depends, there are 13 different types of so sources of information that we use. So as social research, it also depends on the, 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 tar the type of research that you do, the, your sample size, type of sample and all that. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, you go out interviewing NPP people, okay. maybe not that deliberately, but you get the, the, the response they like to be more different than if you go out interviewing, let's say, NPP, NDC people who would like to paint the government black, why the others would like to paint the government white. So, and in any case, that difference was just what? Is it one? Yeah. So I don't see, I don't see that as a difference or a, a better performance. Because from 48, we are going down. The highest Ghana has ever got on the CPI is 48. So we should be struggling to get to 50, at least half. Half. If you write an exam and you don't get 50%, you're failed. So I have I said that we should not rejoice in over basics. This slight chain. But it's not even that alone. Okay. You now just turn on the radio. Now people are accounting the government that is it's one day, one, one scandal. Not one dam, one, one village, one dam. So you begin to wonder, what is it that we have gotten wrong? Why is this happening? And it's one of the things I told about making promises to people. You look, just look at the PPA case, for example. Mm -hmm. This guy, some time ago, was under what, in Water Company, or Ghana Water, Com Ghana Water and Sewage Corporation. Mm -hmm. He ordered, procured letterheads for 100 years. They were, they were, they were investigated, and uh, they were supposed to have been sacked. But they used technicalities. They didn't go to the right procedure to remove them. It was brought back. Then President Kufok knew that, he, I think he would have known, brought him in. He stayed there until they the left power. President Nakuvado has brought him back again. So you even begin to wonder, is it that you want to bring people who can play the tricks for you? People who know the game of corruption. Yes, so that you can, you can, you can, earn, you, you, you can raise funds for your, your campaigns or whatever. So, but having said that, mm. if you have to take loans, some parliamentarians had to sell their, their houses, some sell their cars. To, come, to contest and win. When you win, mm. the first two years, you have to get back those, the, you have to pay back the loans, you have to get back some of the properties that you sold out. The next two years, you are spending trying to see how best you can raise money for that year, the, 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 the next election. Mm. So I think it's partially our democracy that is dealing with us. A democracy? Yes. Because I've said if you want power, you have to have money. And there are people who go in there thinking it's a business. So when you get in there, you look around, what is there for me? What can I get? And, and that one, when you look at the benefits that parliamentarians get, when they just come in, you get a loan to buy a car. You get a loan, 50000 or something, for a house, mm -hmm. to rent a house for 50000 When we are saying that the parliament should pass a law that forbids tenants and uh, landlords from taking rent for more than six months. Then you officially give parliamentarians four years, four years uh, rent advance. So the, the best way to go about it is also to give them about six months advance, is that it? Yeah, some of, them are even, some of them have been there for long, they have their own houses, they have cars, they don't need those loans, but you give it to them. In addition, end of service benefits, those who have just come back, they also take end of service benefits. They wait for four years to increase their salaries, Give them arrears every year. It, they put twenty percent on the, 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 the year's salary. Mm -hmm. So in the fourth year, they will have had eighty percent increase of their salaries. So they use that to pay the end of service benefits. They pay them arrears plus these other other perks. So some people see it as a, a business, and since it's a business, you are ready to spend anything to get it. Mm. Of course, if you lose, you have a problem. But since they see it as a business, they're ready to spend anything to get it. And so you are ready to go out and take bank loans, to take personal loans, sell properties to get it. And so when you get it, especially when you have majority in power, you think that nothing will happen to you. Or especially if you have your godfathers. <laughs> you think that nothing will happen to you. And you would have also contributed something to the party. So how can they expose you? They will be afraid to expose you. These few things that have come out about investigations and people resigning, it's because we're heading towards 2020. That's how I look at it. I may be wrong, but I think it's because we're heading towards 2020. Or that some of them have exposed in a way that they cannot be swept under the carpet. You know, 
the president was actually championing the fight against corruption. It was one of the main reasons why he wanted to be president. And then he's become president. But then there are lots of school of thought saying that uh, some say he's, he's failed. Others are saying that he's, he's forging for his doing really well. In, 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 what would you say? <laughs> he has failed. He has failed. Scale of 1 to 10. We were deceived into thinking that he's incorruptible, he will not tolerate corruption, and that when he comes, things are going to be better than before. But as I've told you, things are worse than before. And not just by his government, but previous government that's always been worse than the previous government. On a scale of 1 to 10, I just say he has failed. I can't give it. <laughs> so that's a zero? Yes, because every day, you just take the newspapers, you listen to the radio, and one person or the other. And in some cases, he himself comes out to say, oh, the person has done nothing wrong. You wouldn't even wait for the, the, the investigating bodies to investigate. You come out and say, the, the person has done nothing wrong. And you clear him. And let me give you a few examples. The, 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 the money for seats, what? Money for, for, for seats suck. Mm -hmm. He said he called the minister and talked to him. I said, yeah, and concluded he had done nothing wrong. The Australian visa saga. Somebody would have written letters for the Ghanaians to go and take Australian visas. They've gone. You can identify them. They've come back. You want to tell us that nobody did wrong? Even if the deputy minister was not involved, if he did nothing wrong, how about the person? You cannot trace the person who wrote the letters for them to go to the embassy to get the visas? Bust. We had two, 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 two scandals before the, the minister finally resigned, and the minister probably resigned not because of those scandals. We don't know. So you can continue to count these things. And you don't see him acting until just these last two things. The PDS is still there. They're supposed to come back with a report. Mm -hmm. What is in the report? The Ayawaso thing. The president told us that, or said that, he has the law, he's not compelled to release the report. Mm -hmm. But if you are sending a bill to parliament on that, don't you think that parliamentarians need to know what is in that report because it will help them in the debate? Why did you spend money for a committee of three eminent Ghanaians to sit down and do the, the I mean, to, 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 to investigate the matter? At least, if you don't want to give us a detailed report, come out with your white paper so that we know that, yes, this is what was found. You've accepted this, you have not accepted this. It's keeping quiet. Transparency and accountability are the tools of, for fighting corruption. And they don't exist now. Transparency, accountability, accountability has vanished under this government. It appears. Or at least they have reduced. To be fair, maybe we say they have reduced. Because at least you go to some offices and you want information, they'll give it to you. But when it comes to these high profile cases, that's where the government is found wanting. There, there have been um, people who have come out to say that it may not necessarily be the president per se, but it's the bad nuts. Um, around him. Do you, do you agree with that school of thought? Who put those bad notes there? When you are not corrupt, when you are, not, when you are incorruptible, mm. but you have been given power and trusted with state power to use it for the benefit of Ghanaians, and you are not acting. Your inaction is a demonstration of your failure, your your failure mm -hmm. to fight corruption. You have all the powers. You can sack a minister today. There's no minister in this country that you cannot sack. Unless, of course, he started, started by surrounding himself at the beginning with family members and relatives, so maybe there he cannot sack them because of that relation. But that's not official. So he made a mistake from the very beginning, appoint 110 ministers, some of them from his family and close associates. So it already compromises your, your power to deal with corruption. So if somebody says he, his people are bad nuts, you put them there. Even if you put them there without knowing that they were bad nuts, uh -huh. you found out that they are doing they are bad nuts. What have you done to them? It's where he say that I mean it's the reason he appointed the special prosecutor. I mean under this administration, they passed the um, RTI bill, doing all these sort of makeup for that. How long did it take for the RTI bill to be passed? They promised. They may, even after winning, they made special, certain public pronouncements. Mm. But we had to put pressure. Civil society put a lot of pressure. Media put a lot of pressure. 
before they finally passed it. The Office of Special Prosecutor, the law was passed in December, or was it November 2017? And the, the office was created January. Someone was appointed February. Mm. How long did it take before they appointed board members? Up to July. Then you come to the fact, I mean, the issue of providing the necessary resources. There was no budget in 2018 for the Office of Special Prosecutor. Up to now, I don't know if there's a latest development, but the Office of Special, the, the Special Prosecutor has said that he has only three investigators seconded from the Ghana Police Service. These are already investigators mm. in a different institution. So where is their loyalty? What prevents them from giving the clearance to recruit new, new people for his outfit? Then he needs lawyers. Where is the money? Even the office space. But of course, having said that, maybe people still, we still expect that the special prosecutor should be able to act within the, the constraints that he's facing. Just like in most other institutions, you have a budget, you don't get any release until about Ju 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 June, July. But you, you take your salary, so you're expected to do something. Exactly. So, yes, it's something he has created, it's a good thing, but you have not given them the necessary powers and resources to actually ex execute their mandate. But there are certain things that do not even need to go to the Office of Special Prosecutor. Such as? Like the appointments. You see, there's something between the law and what is morally wrong. If I've appointed you to do something and I see that you're not performing, mm -hmm. do I need to send it to the Office of Special Prosecutor for them to say that you have done something wrong and should be removed? You, you should go ahead and call the person to order. This is the information I'm having that you are doing one, two, three, which are not right. So either you change or you go. And if the fellow doesn't change, he goes. You don't need to send the person to Office of Special Prosecutor. And again, these things that they've just done this week and last week, when you suspend somebody, Mm -hmm. He's probably still staying in his government bungalow. He's probably still ha having his car and other s facilities at his disposal. Because he's sent the investigation. Those that are fired, they said they should have made him to resign. And I just read the let uh, one of the letters. Take whatever benefits you are entitled to by law. When you sack somebody, what benefit does the person take? Hmm. So are we serious about the fight against corruption? Just, we're just painting the top to make it look white, but under, it's not white. Wow. So in, in 2016, the former president, Mahama, he established a, a citizen complaint center to sort of help the, I mean, incorporate the citizenry into fighting corruption. And we do not know what has happened to that. What, what, what do you make of this? No, I, 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 I don't actually know, because if it's 2016, mm. I'm not sure that much was done. Just as they made some appointments in 2016, after, even after the elections. Mm. So sometimes you say politicians are the same. Why did they wait until all these years before appointing a commissioner after Loretta, the, the lady was, yeah. Yeah, was removed? What were they waiting for? And with this government fighting corruption today, up to now, Shrag has two, a de, a, one commissioner and two, a, one deputy commissioner. When the law provides for two deputy commissioners, what are we waiting for? Is there nobody that is qualified to occupy that position? Or is it a deliberate effort to, 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 to frustrate the, 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 the institution? And it has always been like that. They have, no government has, under this uh, fourth republic, has been very, Faithful in put, giving the commission three commissioners. Somebody is acting. Somebody is, uh, and then living with, a deputy commissioner is made to act. Which means you have only two, two, two people. When there's supposed to be three. The law says three. So if there's a controversial matter that they are going to, to take a decision on, mm -hmm. and they vote opposite, one, one, who, what decision are they going to take? You see, so when you are looking at the performance with regards to fighting corruption, don't just take one or two things and say, oh, it's done well or it's not done well. Look at all the things. Institutions. Up to date, there are still institutions that do not have boards of directors. What is the reason? To give the CEOs, CEOs or whatever, or the ministers, the leeway to do what they want. The first, in 2017, mm -hmm. you know, there were movements of people. 
to areas where there were no board, well, board, shuffle, yeah, right. no boards. So the minister was able to do certain, certain things. Maybe if there was a board, they might have been able to ask him to put brakes, his legs on the brakes. This didn't happen. So he deliberately delay, allowed him to do the wrong things. And when a board comes in, they'll find him go to say go. And especially in our system where the CEO decides what the board should get as, as, uh, as uh, let's say, as, uh, as allowances and all that. Yeah. And then the board also determines what the CEO should get as his salary and other remunerations. And look at what's happening at GRE, acting chair of a board. You rent your own properties to the, 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 the institution. Taxes. Government cannot operate without taxes. And GRE undertakes public education to ensure that people pay their taxes. But if I pay the tax and you're not using it to the benefit of, the Ghanaian, of Ghanaians, what encouragement is there for me to pay taxes? Okay. Except that I'm afraid that you will come and arrest me. And how many people have we seen being sent to court over non-payment of taxes? You see, so there are just a few people, salary workers that we run after. That one, they don't have a choice. End of the month, you have to deduct and go and pay the GRE. Uh -huh. The people that are in a position to pay huge taxes, we don't see them being paid. I mean, are, we don't see them being uh, held to pay the appropriate taxes. And they are in a position to employ qualified accountants to work on their tax, their uh, finances for them. So you see, Ghana could have been getting twice the tax we are getting today if we were serious about going after people who should be paying taxes. Finally, parliamentarians, how many of them have tax files? But you know a lot of them are doing private businesses. So when they just say, oh, our tax are deducted from salary, that's not it. You are doing other things. Some of them have hotels, some of them have filling stations, some of them have various things. And they may not have tax files at all. So with the parliamentarians like this, how, what, what are the exact, what's the exact approach they should use to, I don't want to, I don't want to use the word corner, but get them to review the tax uh, we, Some of us have made suggestions to GRA, but they don't seem to be listening to it. The point is this. GRA has a lot of powers. Yeah. I can invite you today, when I see that you are living an uh, ostentatious life. Yes. To interview you. What is your source of income? What are all those things? So we said that look, if you just say parliamentary, it's like you are targeting that group of people. No. Say, for example, lawyers. Okay. They publish names of people, I mean, they are, uh, what do we call it? Those who are of good standing in yes. the newspapers. Yes. Accountants, they do. Other professionals, they do. Just pick that list and invite them. Or just send them tax returns. Please complete these things. And there's a declaration there to sign that what you have put there is true. So if later on it's found out it's not true, you're held. Auditor General, mm -hmm. assess declaration. We don't know who has declared, who has not declared. Not to talk of what they have declared. What is the problem? Parliamentarians say no. The law doesn't say they should make it. They should publish it. But the law says that the Auditor General shall take, put in place measures to operationalize the law. And if I'm the Auditor General, I think that the best way to operationalize the law is to at least publish the names of people who have declared their assets in the newspapers. You can't take me to court over that. I'm putting in measures that will help me to operationalize the law. But that's not happening. Not to talk about what is going to In some countries, I think Tanzania, there is a, a whole desk. Mm -hmm that checks people, verifies people's declarations. You say you have a house in Kumasi, there's a dra an address, they go and find out where the house actually belongs to you. Because there's this joke about an MP in Uganda, or is it a minister, when he came into power, he, in the first declaration, he put that he had four houses. He had already made up his mind every year I was going to build a house, so at the end of four years we have four houses. So he put it there. So if you open his declaration after the four years, oh, yeah, yeah, I already yeah. had this house before I came in. Okay. And you have heard politicians say that we are our own people. We, we had our wealth before we came, came in. What is the wealth? Is it in your asset declaration? Talking about the suspension of the PPA boss and what went into it, do you think the approach or procedure that they, they've used in handling the situation is the best? Or was, was the optimum way to handle it? Well, I... We are in a democracy, and the, 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 the point is always that uh, we should give you a, a chance to make your case. So 
they're going to investigate and probably come out with whatever. If mm -hmm. he's found guilty, then he would be, uh, he would face the full rigors of the law if that is what will happen, a prosecution or something. But you see, the word suspension means that you probably, uh, they don't even say suspension without pay, which means you still be enjoying your benefits. That's my, 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 my worry about that. And whether there's no likelihood that somebody can tamper with the documents. My second concern about that is that he has been suspended, but the NIH people have been sacked. So what is the difference? When they are found, when, when they are accused of a similar, well, the same crimes. Okay. What is the basis? I don't know. Would you say that your, your former office, the GI, did they have any influence from the government? In terms of, in, at my time? Comparing your time to what we are at today. I cannot talk on what happened after I left. But I never, at no stage, did any government official come to my office or call me or invite me to a meeting to talk about what the work we do. In fact, there was only one day somebody came, passed by. That time we were at Kosu. Mm -hmm. Somebody passed by and said, oh, he was passed by, you want to say hello, somebody in government. He said, well, but you people, you are, you are worrying us too much. That's all he said. Then I said something one time, another MPP guy, that was Anna Kofor, mm. called me and said what I said was not good enough. Uh, he's the president of this country and uh, I shouldn't have used, used certain words. What, what do you remember the words he used? Oh, I used like, uh, uh, I don't remember, but it's like hiding. There's an expression when you're when you refusing to face the facts. Probably in the way, but at least I said something that he, they felt. But that was just, he was advising me as a friend or something, but he was, he's an MPP strong person. Then, of course, also under, under Mama, mm -hmm. an uh, NDC person, a friend called me and said, look, what you said, I said that uh, he should go and learn from, President Mama should go and learn from Tanzania, what he was doing. And <laughs> the fellow called and said, look, it's not good. I shouldn't have said that. So we issued a press statement to apologize to, on that. Yeah. But no direct force on us not to do what uh, we were doing. So there was no influence whatsoever? No. <clears throat> Even no influence on my board. Of course, if we issued a press, we were issued a press, a press statement, mm -hmm. we would uh, ask the board, we we'll send it to the board to look at and make comments. But the board would not say, you shouldn't issue a statement or you shouldn't do, uh, you shouldn't put certain words in. They would just correct, say this, maybe if you say it this way. So I never had that serious uh, force from any, any, any outside, any person. Mm -hmm. I see. You, you stated, um, I'm back to the comparison thing, you, you stated that um, because corruption worsens by the administration, it essentially means that this administration, the Kofor's government, has been worse than um, his predecessors. I'm picking Mahama because Mahama is his immediate uh, predecessor. Now, the general secretary of the NDC, um, Sitting case, he's come out strongly to say that Mohammed's fights against corruption is unprecedented. This government cannot compare. But then again, there were some um, investigations or some exposés. I can easily recall the Ford, we call, what we termed the Ford saga. Of course, it was rubbished and everything. In your own words, would you? aligned to what he's saying, especially since you've already said that this government is, is doing worse, but taking the two subjects, Makufado's uh, approach and Mohammed's approach. If you just want to count the corruption allegations that were made under Mohammed's government mm -hmm. and the corruption allegations that are made under his government, and you see which has more allegations of corruption, and you will agree with me, that this government has, has more. You just list them, the Americas, the PDS, the, 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 the boss, the Australia, they are just too many. Mm. In two years old. Okay. <laughs> As compared to somebody who was there for four or four and a half years. Okay. So when you look at that and I think that 
we shouldn't compare. But I've already said that every new government has more than the previous one. Mm. Just your, your final statement. What should be the um, best approach moving forward from this administration for good governors to be able to curtail all these things? It appears some of us have been fighting a losing battle. We need a third force in this country. Because when you have NDC or NPP, they come out and they wait for eight years knowing that they are coming back. So they don't care what they do when they come back, especially trying to pick up from where, they, pick up the pieces that they left behind. So we need a real, serious leader. We need a president that will be bold to fight corruption. And I'm talking about elections, I'm not talking about any, any unlawful means. Mm. And that's why some of us have been saying that, look, the opposition party, small opposition parties also come together and see whether they can form a third force. But they are not also serious. Each of them wants to be a president. And if you cannot get 10 votes, uh, 10 parliamentarians in parliament, how do you expect to win power as a president? But they don't want to come together. I don't know whether they benefit by being in uh, uh, small opposition parties. <laughs> Maybe not take so. So unless the president changes, whether this president or any other president changes and decides that, please, I am not going to tolerate this. We will not succeed in the fight against This has been the former director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative. We need a third force in this country. And this administration, the Akufuado government, needs to sit up. I mean, from everything he he's stated, it just means one thing. The performance has been the worst so far. And despite what every um, appointee comes to say, despite what every minister comes to say, I mean, the experts are saying that it's, it's just not enough.